Hello and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to continue with concurrency and for the next couple of videos we are also going to continue with concurrency because it's a, such an important topic. So thank you so much to all my subscribers. I'm really happy um, and grateful that you've joined and subscribed to my channel. Please tell your friends so I know to make more. <laughs> Um, yeah, so today we're going to continue just with simpler rate. It's going to be a short video. Next week we're going to move on to producer, consumer and see how that looks. It's a bit of a bigger topic so I'm going to isolate the topics into smaller chunks from now on because I know the previous feedback that I got was to make your video shorter. So um, we had a look last week about um, simple array and with simple array there was a couple of things to do with um, secure random array and write index and we were talking about it we said we cannot trust the program's behavior um, and also ex we needed exclusive access waiting for threads to be processed and we spoke a little bit about synchronization but we didn't continue on to do it so synchronizing shared um, access and mutual exclusion and I think I also made a joke about um, mutually exclusive anyway um, so now we are going to continue with the same program i'll put it up on github as well um so it's down in the link in the description so um we are going to continue f with this it's really nice because i'm going to talk a little bit about theory and then add a word and you'll see the difference so um this simple array program at the moment is not thread safe it allows an, any number of threads to access it multiple times and there are three specific actions here that are being done through the um, public void add. So we also have sleep involved which I'll get to in a minute. Um, so we have a couple of things that are going to be modifiable. So we, we spoke a bit about mutable, mutable being changeable. <laughs> Just a nice fancy word for changing things it mutates. So um, we have simple array is not thread safe because it allows any number of threads to read or modify the shared mutable data concurrently. So if we have, for instance, we're writing to an array, um, we're incrementing in the array, we don't want another thread to come in, do the same thing while another thread is doing it. So um, this will cause errors obviously in the calculations if we have multiple threads using the same data. So to make simple array thread safe, we must ensure that no two threads have access to the same shared data. So we basically are saying you have access, you're going to lock this, have access to it while you run it, unlock it when it's done. Um, and we know already the process of it from our previous videos. So while one thread is in the process of storing write index here, um, writing to the array and incrementing should be um, what's known as atomic operations. <laughs> so an atom, one. <laughs> atomic op operations that cannot, which can't be divided into sub operations or sub routines or anything like that. We need them to be atomic. So we can simulate atomicity <laughs> by ensuring only one thread has access to it um, and carries out all the three operations at one time at any given time even so we have one thread accessing it all in this method we have one thread accessing this next thread accessing this instead of multiple threads coming in doing the calculation going back out another thread comes in halfway through one thread still being processed it comes back with a different figure etc etc you know how it goes <laughs> it's going to be messy even in human in human interaction if you're calculating something and somebody comes over and adds more things to it and then adds more things to it and somebody else is calculating the same thing but they only go over to them with other things same thing this is just at a computer level <laughs> So um, atomicity <laughs> can be achieved with one nice keyword called synchronized. So we're going to add the keyword synchronized 
to our public void add and we're going to avoid all of the issues that I just raised. We allow only one thread at a time to acquire the lock. For those of you who used to work with databases circa 2008, even maybe earlier, um, you could only access an access database. You had to acquire a lock and then wait until whoever was using it to finish using it and then release that lock and give it back to you. <laughs> if you have um, print jobs, for so for print spooling, you can see different, yeah, anyways, let's not go there. <laughs> I'm showing my age now. Um, this ensures that a thread executing the operations will set actual values um, of the shared mutable, mutable being changeable data and that these values will not change unexpectedly midway through. So middle of the operations as a result of any other threads modifying them. So here we have public void add. We already said that we just add one little keyword, right? What was the keyword again? Synchronized. So I need access to my keyword. Where do we put the keyword? We put it in front of void. Synchronized. Is it spelled with a S? No, it's spelled with a Z. We use American spelling. <laughs> so this would be the before results that I ran earlier. And now I'm going to run again. Yes, always save resources when I run. So also a very important note is when you're using sleep you should never call sleep in a holding an applic a real application this is just for demonstration purposes to show how um each of these are going are going through the operation so in a synchronized add method we print the messages to the console indicating the process um, the progress of the threads as they execute the method in addition to performing the like writing to the array and inserting a value and etc cetera, etc cetera. we do this um, so that you can see each of the mess messages appearing on the screen will be printed in the correct order allowing us to see whether the method is properly synchronized <laughs> by comparing these outputs from the previous unsynchronized example we can continue to output messages from the synchronized blocks and you can see how the input output should not be performed in synchronized blocks because it's important to minimize the amount of time that an object is also locked. So here you can see one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> so you can see each of the pool and thread wrote one to element zero, one, two, three, four, five, which is in the correct um, way if I remove the synchronized, remember this output for one moment. Um, so you can see here next write index one, two, three, four, five, six, which is correct. However, we need to know that thread minus one, minus one, minus one, minus two, minus two, minus two. And because I've taken out the synchronized, let's have a look at how it looks. It's not synchronized. You can see minus one, minus two, minus one, minus two, minus two, minus one. And they're writing in all row one, one, two, two, three, three, and it's all over the shop. So if we put back in our synchronized, synchronized with the Z, do you always remember with the Z. Um, I am Irish. I learned a different alphabet. Um, for different spellings, different grammar. Um, so zero, you can see here minus one, minus one, minus one, minus two, minus two, minus two. And it's lovely because it's all in good zero, one, two, three, one, two, three. And you can see even the output is changed. Okay, so we are going to move on to the producer consumer next week so producer consumer relationship without synchronization and then with synchronization and this lovely little keyword right here synchronized makes all the difference <laughs>
Um, so thank you so much for watching. Please stay safe out there and please uh, like, share and subscribe if you like these videos and want me to make more. Okay, thanks. Bye.